Good morning. In this video, I'm going to test the efficacy of this table. This is a dry shaker. Uh, it moves gold in this direction and into the cons port and the material that we don't want, the lighter material, goes out the tailings port. And it does that by an action like this. The table is moving up in this direction at about 8 to 10 times per second. And that liquefies the material, and it also tends to move the heavier material in this direction and out the cons port. Up to this time, I didn't know how well it actually did the job, kind of quantitatively. So I put together um, a test where I make some 200 mesh minus uh, gold particles, and then I mix it with a bunch of uh, beach sand, and I run it through the table, and I figure out how much material that we get uh, after that process is over. So that's what the video is about. I hope you enjoy it, and um, don't forget to hit the like button. So I've never been able to find um, ultra-fine gold, like the stuff we get out of the river sand. So I've taken um, the time to actually make some. So I bought this one gram piece of uh, 24 karat gold, three nines pure. And I make the ultra-fine gold with a file So those divisions are one millimeter. And there's the gold particles that I got from filing. So I bought these two sieves, 150 mesh and 200 mesh. There's the 150, there's the 200. I don't know if we can get Okay, so here's the 200. Very hard to see. There we go. That's 200 mesh. And I'm going to take this gold, which I made by filing, and I'm going to dump it into there. So we'll get a close up of the process. So of course 150 is on top and 200 is on the bottom. So I don't see any more going through. So there's the 150 plus yeah, it's a little ratty from the filing. So I'll carefully put that over there. Here's 200. <laughs> I don't actually see any. And there's 200 minus. So this is finer than 200 mesh. And I think There's the 150 to 200. Okay, so I've teared this little boat out. And I'm gonna take the gold and carefully, see if I can do this without spilling it all. So I ended up with uh, 67 milligrams, or 0 0.067 grams, of 200 minus, which is smaller than 75 microns. And there it is. And now I'm going to do something frightening. I've got 5 kilos of beach sand, 
that's been classified to 16 mesh or something like that. And I'm going to dump this ultrafine gold in this bunch of beach sand. And I find it totally hard to believe that I can get this back out with that dry shaker, but that's the idea. I don't know if I'll ever see this gold again, but I'm going to give it a try. Uh. All right, so here's the setup. I've got the tailings bucket, the cons bucket over there. Here's the material. I'm going to run through it. My controller, it's set at uh, 13 and a half volts and a portable battery supply. Battery's 12 volts. Inside of here, there's a up converter, voltage um, converter from 12 to 18, so I can run this table anywhere up to 18. The hopper, inside the hopper is a little tray with holes in it. I'm gonna try this tray first, because I haven't tried it yet, and um, we'll see if it works. Produces the right amount of stuff. So. I'm gonna run this just like I would run it in the field. I'm not going to um, play any games. I'd love to see how much of that gold that we put in there I can get out the other end um, under field conditions. Of course, this is beach sand. It's not river sand, but you know, it's what I got. So here's the tailings bucket, and here's what's in the cons bucket. All right, so it weighs 450 uh, grams out of five kilograms, so that's 9% of the original weight. All right, I'm gonna get rid of the black sand by using a simple magnet and a PVC tube. So let's go in here and gather up the magnetic material. Oh, So the water has uh, soap in it, just dish soap, a little bit. You don't need that much to break the surface tension. Don't pan far back far enough to catch these corners, because if you do, that's the first place the gold shows up, and you can wash it right out of the pan. And then we take the tongue off. That's a little bit too aggressive. Okay, I'm down to this, and uh, son of a bitch, I can actually see the gold. And some of it's even floating a bit. So I've been panning the really tiny, tiny stuff. I've probably been panning it out. A beautiful example of the gold in the corner.
48 out of 67. I'd say that's incredibly good. Okay, let's do a little summary here. So I was running around 100 kilograms per hour run rate, which you saw in the video. And um, we got a 70% recovery rate for the 200 minus mesh gold that we put in. And if you take the tailings and run it through again, you can get a total of 80% recovery rate by doing that. And that may or may not be useful depending on lots of variables in the situation. So let's take a hypothetical example. I ran some material I just picked up from the Kern River sand and um, brought it home. And it had, my guess is that it had at least seven parts per million of gold in it. It might have been quite a bit more because I wasn't super careful about the whole thing. <clears throat> Anyway, let's say we took the machine down to the river and we did a four hour run, which is really not much work. All you're doing is loading the hopper with um, sand and the machine more or less does the rest of the work for you. So we would run 400 kilograms in four hours. There would be a total of um, 2.8 grams if we had 100% recovery. But we only have 70% recovery, so that would be two, 2 grams of gold in 4 hours. And I think any river prospector would say, you know, that's not so bad. Here's some important points. I don't make anything for sale. I'm sorry about that. A lot of people ask me but it also has a upside, and that is I don't have any um, ax to grind. So everything I do here, I show you, um, you know, what it's really about. I am making a build video for this machine. In fact, I've got it most of the way done, so you can um, expect to see that shortly. I'm going to pick up some river sand for further testing. And we'll see how much we can really get out of this machine. I mean, that's very important. And surely your mileage will vary if you um, make this machine. It's going to depend on lots and lots of different conditions and how you set up the machine and what your uh, run rate is and so forth. And lastly, I'm looking for a name. So if you can think of a clever name for the machine, I will take it in consideration. Um, and if so, please leave it in the comments.